Greetings and Namaste. This is Shiva. I'm a wellness and self-discovery coach based out of Minneapolis, Minnesota. And this is my friendly neighborhood online attempt at spreading my message of wellness. Wellness for all. That's my mission. All right. These are raw videos. I'm just kind of getting started with this whole online thing. Um, you know, that's, you know, the pandemic has wreaked a lot of havoc in people's lives. Um, you know, loved ones have been lost, schedules have been turned topsy-turvy, and economies have basically sunk. But, you know, with adversity comes opportunity, and um, I'm the type of person who has learned that you can either let adversity bring you down, or you can try and find the silver linings and continue to move forward, because, as they say, this too shall pass. So, something new will come, Maybe better, maybe worse. You know, that's the nature of life, cyclical. So let's kind of go with the flow here and um, turn into um, turn to the things that, that are within our grasp, that are within our reach, that we can um, control to a greater or lesser degree and derive joy and pleasure from. So in today's session, um, I'm taking a slightly different um, practitioner angle on the practice of asan or poses as they're popularly known in yoga um, and poses are basically postures intended to bring about a certain change you know when you when you start an asan the idea is that you will be changed after having done it so today's um uh, without further ado, we'll get into today's pose, which is um, one of the classic poses you might have seen in a lot of, um, you know, pictures or, um, you know, traditional drawings, things of that nature. It's called Padmasan, um, and Padma means um, lotus, and lotus has a, a very deep significance in the yogic tradition. It basically symbolizes um, the ability of beauty to come out of filth. So a lotus grows in filth, right? Its, its roots are in filth. And in fact, um, the more potent the filth, um, you know, the better it is for the lotus. Um, so that's a, str you know, strange sort of contradiction paradox there. Um, and the lotus rises high and beautiful out of the filth to really um, open up to the sky, um, you know, seeking a higher level. So the lotus is symbolic of um, kind of the potential of life, um, especially of humans, you know, the conscious beings that we are to um, embrace a higher level of existence, not just be trapped in our body or minds or hearts or, um, you know, past experiences um, or past lives for, you know, those who believe in um, karma theory um, over that time frame. But Padmasan is a classic pose and it is aimed at um, getting one into a state of meditation. That's, you know, if, if we go by Patanjali, whose classic yoga sutras focus on um, the state of moksha, um, of getting to that high, highest level of consciousness, um, he basically um, would say that um, this is definitely a go-to posture um, for, for getting into deeper meditative states. However, um, like all asanas, um, you know, there's other um, schools that came, I believe, after Patanjali, like um, Hatha Yoga, um, which, you know, has about, at least, depending on which text you're looking at, then there's, there's about three or four classic texts, and there's many that came after that. There's many um, gurus and teachers and lineages that came after that that expounded further um, on those texts. You know, you might have heard of um, the Hatha Yoga Pradipika, um, or you might have heard of the Gheranda Samhita, or maybe you've heard of uh, BKS Iyengar or Krishnamacharya. So all of these folks were very asan focused, um, and while they took different approaches to exploring the the world of asan, um, you know, all of these are are really great ways to um, enter into the whole practice. So for Padmasan, um, when I sort of approached Padmasan, it was like you know one of those um, I'm not flexible deals and how do I get there? So I had to sort of come up with um, a progression that led me into um, an expression of the pose. And, and today I'm, you know, I'm not like a perfect Padmasan um, demonstrator for you, but I can definitely get you um, to a place that might be further along than where you are currently or give you some ideas about how to approach it maybe if... Um, you know, you're looking for a fuller expression of the pose. And again, the fuller expression of the asana is not really about the 
you know, sort of the, the goal of getting there, but it's the journey, right? So there's so much to be said when we take on something bigger than ourselves, bigger than our present capacity or present, you know, present ability even. And uh, we sort of go through the process of even learning how do we get out of this comfort zone, you know, grow that, you know, one inch at a time um, over time. And before you know it, you know, you're looking back at three months, six months, a year of doing this practice and you can barely recognize where you started from, right? So that's that's sort of, um, you know, the reason I'm picking on Padmasan. Um, other than that, it does have a lot of um, therapeutic benefits. Also, it's also um, used to relieve certain conditions. Um, it's one of the few poses that one can do after a meal. A lot of yoga, um, you might have heard, needs to be done on an empty stomach, ideally, right? Um, Padmasan, thankfully, um, is... Is, is broader than that. You can do it after a meal as well. You can do it for meditation. Um, unlike, you know, you're not going to be meditating in like a warrior three um, or a headstand position. So Shishasan, um headstand. And um, so Padmasana is sort of a, a good um, entryway into both the therapeutic benefits of yoga, into the sort of meditative, um, friendly nature of it, and also... Um, sort of getting getting beyond um, one's comfort zone so it, it sort of um, combines all of this and then it's a seated pose so it's it's uh, it's accessible in that you can you know basically sit yourself down even at the end of a, a long day and um, still you know make some progress maybe or at least revisit what you um, you know where you were at before so for me I like to kind of start out with a basic warm-up um, I won't do too much of that here but um, hopefully you come into into the space with some sort of a warm-up and it doesn't have to be a yogic warm-up as long as your body's you know a little open you know you've got some um, joint uh, lubrication happening especially if you look at Padmas and it's going to be a cross leg pose um, you want definitely sort of your lower body your knees your ankles your you know pelvic area um, to be sort of well oiled as you get into this but um, for warm up, you know, generally, and this is sort of very general warm up for for most yoga um, sessions, is chakra vakasan, which is basically you inhale and you exhale. And you inhale and you exhale. And you inhale. And you exhale, come back to center. There's many variations of this. This is just one variation I'll demonstrate from the side so you can kind of see how it goes. So, inhale up.
just sort of line your feet up against each other, toes to toes, um, and heel to heel. And, and maybe, you know, put your hands on your feet here, like so. And don't focus on the breathing right now. This is, you know, first part of asana and, um, is generally just maintaining a, a stable breath, you know, one is to one breath, uh, samavritti it's called. So try to have generally equal inhales and equal exhales. Don't worry about the pauses in between for now um, if you're new to this. But if you already have a, a, a sort of breathing practice that works for you during asana, feel free to use that. Um, but let's sort of stay in Bhattakonasana and see how it feels. Um, again, you have to notice where your, your body is at. Um, like I can feel a slight slouch in my shoulders. Right now I can feel a kind of rounding of my back. Um, I'll give you a side view here see that right so I'm kind of kind of lean forward as if you know I'm just doing my regular um, work at a laptop so that's that's not the purpose of this so maybe this is where the breath comes into play and as you take a breath in notice the spine straight basically stability and ease you want to build stability and ease in the asana it should be a forced thing you should be like you know grimacing as you try to you know maintain a straight back that's not the point you know patanjali um you know with with his third limb of asana is hoping to prepare us for the eventual state of dhyan which is meditation and um you can't be meditating if you're in pain or you're in discomfort so the asana should be easy but stable it should um leave you feeling open to um, you know the energy of the universe essentially but but not be you know trying to work you know grunt your way through it this is this is not a power lifting competition by any means um, so again Padmasana is one of the ways um, if, if you're really going for the meditative aspects you might want to try some other pose that is is more comfortable and stable so keep that idea of um, Stira Sukham in your mind right so so now um, if, if you're with me on the Bhattakonasana let's um, start to do some you know start to notice you know how what our range of motion is so essentially when when we when we're in Bhattakonasana like like so um, there's a tendency if we have tightness in the pelvic area for our legs to be kind of like this you know it's, they're gonna kind of resist gravity pulling them down so you want to try and breathe into that. You want to kind of just recognize the spots of that tightness, of that resistance. And over time, um, know that um, they will they will find that, yeah, they can actually relax into the pose. Every now and then, um, you know, to, to encourage that or just give, you know, give the body a taste of that, you can put, put like your arms like this and that creates, a more, you know, some weight on your knees and some extra encouragement to, to move downward toward the floor. So ideally, you know, for Padmasana, your knees would be touching the floor. Um, mine don't even, you know, even right now. Um, you know, I'm not that warmed up, but um, mine do not touch the floor. But, but heck, that wasn't going to stop me from going for Padmasana, right? At least some expression of it. So so that's what I'm trying to tell you is, is recognize where you are and um, go forward as long as it, it feels safe in your body. Um, so the next thing you can do to encourage some of that opening up is just do these little butterflies, right? These micro ones. Start with really micro ones. Um, so as you can see from the side, um, you can vary the, the pace. You can go slow. You don't have to go like this. You can go slow. Just feel. Feel that opening up. And it shouldn't be that spring back. You know, breathe in just to make sure you have that, that nice long spine. 
and occasionally press on them. You know, you can sort of do a, do a bit of a forward fold here to get even more traction with your elbows, you know, digging into the tops of um, just above kind of your knees on the inside of your thighs and get some more traction. So, so experiment with, um, you know, how that opening goes for you. Again, maybe um, this might be more all that you need to do um, over your first session or a certain number of sessions. Um, just as you kind of come to understand the different dynamics, how your body feels, what feels comfortable, what feels like you're you're kind of exploring, you know, new territory. Um, again, come back to the um, you know the easy breath and the state of silkum of the practice. Um, this is not about trying to you know get into the Olympics, the Yoga Olympics, by any chance. So this is really about your practice and exploring your body with curiosity and wonder. You know, some days you'd be like, oh, I could do this yesterday, but it isn't happening today. You know, yeah, that's that's the nature of the body. No, no two days are the same, right? Um, nothing in nature is the same day after day, so why would we be any different? Um, other days you might find, wow, today was, I could, I really felt I made some progress. So over time, you know, the little ones and the big ones, you know, everything will you know, add up and you maybe see an upward curve. So, so that's that's one, um, just to kind of open up um, the pelvic, the hip joint area to some extent. Um, now the next next thing you can do um, to prepare um, to an eventual Padmasana is um, having your legs out wide, say about 90 degrees or whatever seems fine for you. Again, um, at a certain, you'll find after a certain point, it feels, you know, just just hard on your knees or somewhere you'll just feel discomfort so pull yourself back from whatever that position is and like I said it could be a different it could be different um, every day that you do it um, you know feet are um, heels are on the floor um, this seems like about a, a safe place for me you might even want a, a good I don't have a wall behind me here but you know having a wall behind you um, will support you um, it more in noticing the erectness of your back even as you maybe focus more on um, some of the other areas as you prepare for Padmasana. So, so I'd suggest maybe doing everything against the wall. Um, sorry, should that should have said that before. But nevertheless, um, this is also going to help you because you're going to feel the slouch, you know, as, as you go from one asana to the other, or warm, one warm-up to the other, you're going to feel the slouch. So now here, you know, again, just, just sort of um, recognize where you are here. You know, where's the feeling of comfort? Where's the feeling of stretched where's the um, you know how do you how do you want to make those micro adjustments that help maintain a direct spine or bring you back to that place of stira sukha asana um, so um, if you're here at a certain point um, similar to Bhattu Konasana the next thing might be to um, start getting some ankle rotations here so be really gentle and careful here you might want to bend your knees a little bit. It doesn't have to be touching the floor like that. Um, we're sort of just getting some joint rotation happening here. Over time, you might want to go lower to where your where the sides of your feet alternate between touching the floor um, first to the outside, then to the inside. And again, you can sort of rest your hands behind you like we did in Bhattu Konasana just to give you that extra support while you focus more on the joint aspects of this rather than the um, you know, spine straightening aspects. And, and for me actually, um, Padmasan um, is one of those poses that when I, I remember when I first sort of got it, you know, I, when I first was able to get into a, a fairly decent expression of the pose, um, I just felt like my spine shot straight up. It was just like whoop like a chiropractor had given me some sort of um, crazy adjustment and I was just like whoop you know standing straight up like a rod um, and uh, yeah so, so don't worry about that there's there's a lot that goes into these asanas um, there's a lot of energy channels that get activated um, there's a lot of our musculature that we don't typically use um, that over time supports us in manifesting that 
So if, if you've done some of these, um, again, you might want to work with this for um, days, months, weeks, as is appropriate for you. But this is like warm up number two. Um, the third one is is if some some of you are familiar with pigeon pose, um, it's it's sort of similar to that. Um, so for that, you basically come to dandasan, which is you know staff pose, essentially legs straight out um, together, you know long straight back, and that's that's your starting. And now from dandasan, you basically get your you know, say if you're starting with your right leg you basically pull it up here um, towards your groin area and kind of see how that works for you this is like kind of a seated tree pose if you if you've done tree pose or brikshasan um, this is sort of like a seated version of that um, so just get, get it here if you don't want to start there you can always you know start here 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 but eventually you want to kind of open up this hip kind of see what that feels like as always you want to balance both sides of the body um, do the same here here kind of see how that works and you know the beauty about balancing is you do find out there's differences in both sides and then you um, you know work with that difference in terms of you honor that difference and then you don't just gloss over it so so as you do that um, you might want to do that for a while depending on where areas of tightness are um, the next step would be to actually bring your leg up and as you can see um, this foot will go into the opposite elbow in a crook on the elbow and the arm will kind of support it here and this arm will go around the knee and basically this becomes a cradle your baby right so so now you can sort of do these little rock by movements. You don't have to, but it gives you kind of something to do rather than just sit in the pose. And I think it lubes up the joints too, at least for me. Continue to breathe. You might feel this is coming easy. You might feel you need to, you know, let go and give it a break. Again, go with the pace that is right for you. Um, this is all about you doing Padmas and not Padmas and doing you. So, so, you know, keep that in mind. Um, let's try this on the other side. So, foot comes up, rests in the opposite elbow, crook of the elbow. Um, this crook comes around the knee. Um, I like to join my hands like this. You can keep them like this. Doesn't really, the hands are not that critical. Um, I just like to have like a stable, stable place to hold, and then you can sort of do the box. And again, you can, you know, rock forward and back. You can side to side kind of um, you know, kind of experiment with with what the range of motion is of the leg in this position and as you get that over time things will open up all right so so those are like three key warm-ups to do um, and if you then so feel inclined and you don't have any knee issues um, you don't have um, any ankle issues any lower back you know issues or you know you're just um, you're healthy and you kind of feel yeah this is something that I can get into you know again listen to your body trust your body and anytime there is discomfort um, you know just back off especially when you're trying something new pain oh you don't even want to go go to that level um, that's just going too fast too soon too far um, so none of that right so go slow um, go like um, millimeter at a time um, and enjoy it you know this would be fun this is like yeah discovering um, you know how to walk or um, discovering a new sort of way you can be with your body um, so, so so really embrace that journey that's you know half the benefits are gonna be there it's not even gonna be once you get the pose if, if you're gonna be all like stressed out about it all right so um, now for those that are going for the um, that are at a point where they want to try the whole pose um, and you know you can rewind the video at any point and go back to um, the pieces that you find are meaningful um, you know YouTube helps do timestamps so you can always save URLs like that if you want me to put them in I can try and look that up I haven't quite um, started doing that yet but um, 
if if this helps people i would be more than happy to put in that time all right so now if you're doing the actual padmas and assuming you're warmed up um, and over time you won't need the warm up you'll actually maybe have a practice that gets you into a place of padmas in any way naturally um, but assuming that you're warmed up um, and i'm going to put my feet forward because i think you won't, you you could get a closer look now um, you can start with you know the right leg outstretched and now bring the left leg in you know similar to that last warm up the third warm up we did and put your you know sort of curve your foot and put it here and initially you might just want to try just doing this how does this feel um, now what sometimes you might have the you know the you might want to try and press down here just to see what the range of motion is for me personally i kind of like a little more support and i would encourage you to do that too um, if that works for you so actually now at this point once my um, once my heel is sort of resting in this pelvic crease um, i pull my straight leg my dandasan right leg back in and now it's sort of below my um, my top leg my bent leg right now and the you know the leg i bent first and now you kind of press down on it and now i have you know the padding of my foot and my calf um, contact each other as as I press down and, and this seems like a safe spot I know I'm not gonna go beyond and as I feel that foot below me I kind of feel yeah this is this is a good place I'm safe here um, doesn't put too much strain on the knee or you know stretch the ankle too much here um, or you know anywhere else just take some breaths here um, do that let's switch sides do that there So now the left leg is in Dandasan, right leg comes up, the heel lands in the pelvic crease, kind of more or less horizontal right now. Now the Dandasan leg comes back in, says hello, bent leg on top, and now you press down. And you can take some cool breaths here. And this is actually Ardha Padmasan. This is uh, the half lotus. Um, so this is a really cool pose too, um, you know, often in classes, um, you know, when I'm sitting and there's lectures going on, um, I might, you know, go to this pose and then switch legs and, you know, sort of um, keep it moving like that. Because for me, um, you know, I can sit for, uh, you know, a decent period of time, but I like to um, not be in, in one pose um, through that time. So I like to sort of move from one to the other, but this is pretty comfortable for me easy to breathe in you know you can give, give yourself a break shoulders back relax come back to it I love the self hugs you'll find that as you you know maybe explore more practices with me just do the self hugs just bring that broadness into the back um, you know give some love to sort of areas that you normally don't reach so that was Artha Padmasan, um, and that might be plenty for you. Um, and it's going to give a lot of the benefits of Padmasan too. Um, you know, the benefits are definitely from an Ayurvedic standpoint. Um, it's it's particularly helpful for vat derangement, so vat related issues. Um, you know, gas constipation, um, and you know, even stuff related to your menses. Um, you know, for women, um, you know, menstrual menstrual heaviness um, you know even it helps uh, stimulate your digestion um, and then you know of course from a physical standpoint we, we can kind of see the areas it hits so it strengthens all of these areas your ankles your knees um, you know your hip joints um, you know the erectness of your spine relieves backache um, and you know I can I can tell you more about if you'd like to know more about the therapeutic benefits the you know what sort of areas of the body it relieves what doshas it specifically um, addresses like I said it's mostly vat um, but there's also you know some diabetes um, benefits to this for people suffering from diabetes so so Arthpadmasan might be plenty um, for you to um, kind of get into and that's where we started right so so assuming you know you did the start going back to Alternate leg, feel, come here. Now, for for doing the full.
full expression, I like to really make sure my, my heel is snug here. It's snug here in the pelvic crease. You know, I can, you know, I kind of flex my foot here, kind of feel, feel it move. I don't want it to be dead. You know, I want it to be alive. I want it to be connected. So I do that. I also want it to be, you know, sthira sukhamasan. You know, so I'm, um, I'm kind of feeling, yeah, I'm, I'm at a place where I'm confident, but I'm also stable. You know, I'm, I'm comfortable, but I'm also, you know, not straining myself. Once I find that sort of happy medium, um, now this leg basically needs to make the leap over the leg that we moved first to the pelvic area. So one of the ways that might work for you, it worked for me initially. Now, you know, it's since my body's gone through it so many times, it's not that imperative I do it. But I'm going to demonstrate, you know, you sort of lean back a little bit, so which gives gravity um, a chance to, you know, if, if your heel was dug into the pelvic crease here, it gives gravity a chance to assist with that rather than, you know, maybe it's you know, springing forward, especially in the first starting to get there and now you basically similar to you know that that pigeon warm-up we were doing you now sort of move your foot over that leg and into the, the pelvic crease on the other side and again you want to be able to move your legs um, you know don't let them be dead and now you tuck it into this crease for me I had to experiment a while before um, I found a place that was Stirasukhamasana um, and because, you know, my, I've got kind of, um, my thighs aren't, or my calves aren't very meaty, so it's sort of bone on bone, and there's a place where um, it doesn't feel that good, so I have to sort of adjust where that is, which is fine. Um, and maybe that's, that's all you want to do, and then you release, but if you're okay here, now you can stay here. And just notice, I don't know if you notice, but... My spine just kind of went whoop, straight up. And I'm not having that, right? It's just like. Stiram Sukham Asana. And now, if, if you're comfortable here over time, um, you start taking those deep breaths. You know, take a mudra if you need to. We'll cover mudras in, in some of the other ones. Too much all too soon but this is sort of you know where we started this was the picture um, maybe that you had in your mind when I mentioned you know the famous poses that you see um, and over time you know you you'll find one foot is tighter than the other things of that nature um, getting out of it is also important you know you want to what I do normally is I support it basically at the same places that I used to put it there and I just kind of slide it and now I you know tilt forward a little bit just so it comes down so it's not just like a springing out, it's gradual. And you might have some, you know, blood pooled there, so um, just sort of bring them out gradually. Um, and, uh, you know, just do some ankle rotations, maybe. Just maybe do side to side, you know, forward and backward, dorsi and plantar flex, you know, that sort of thing. Um, you know, again, go back to some of your warm-ups, just to feel how that is. stuff and then you know you can like I said balance it on the other side if, if you're so inclined during learning it's not always possible to do like a hundred percent balance which is fine but just know if you have the opportunity um, probably take it if it seems safe and um, a place that is reasonable to go to in that particular session and that particular day given your particular um, feeling and condition um, so again just to it on the other side um, basically bring the right foot up the pelvic crease you know sort of feel confident there and maybe do the lean back if you're not doing the lean back you can also do the lean forward um, so lean forward is like so again gravity does assist um, and you have you know you can sort of make sure you're heel is digging in here um, and now you maybe have less of 
travel to do and you sort of get that <laughs> into this crease so whatever method works for you you know um, and maybe you discover your own um, tweak to get, in, get in that in place but this is Padmasin and again as you can see the spine is just naturally straight it's like I cannot slouch you know beyond a point it's I, I have to like like my body is it's just like phew, I want to be like this this is where I need to be and which is probably why it's so famous and it, it's so accessible for meditation um, I'm not an you know a person who meditates for hours and hours in, in a Padmasana position I do it for a certain length of, length of time um, I started out with maybe a minute you know made it and depending on the day I could go for maybe um, 10 minutes or so but typically I don't go beyond that but like I said, um, the meditative aspects, um, the therapeutic aspects, the physical aspects, just try it out. Um, and as long as you don't have any of those conditions, this is a safe pose that is um, very accessible even after meals and even during um, you know, times of the month like uh, menstruation. Um, so hopefully that helped you. This is sort of the first of the, um, you know, and that wasn't the best way to get into the pose if you notice. Um, but that's what you want to keep an eye out for um, is is don't don't get too excited and and forget the safety aspects but but yeah let me know what you think um, uh, you know what issues specifically you're having in Padmasan maybe I can uh, you know figure those out help help you on your journey there if you just want to know more about um, what you can combine with the asan, you can go there and there's many like variations of Padmasan um, like there's um, Tulasan there is uh, Udva Padmasan and uh, and many more that uh, you know you might want to try as as you explore the world of not just asan but even one asan Padmasan I love doing that I like get into one asan then I explore its various facets and, and it's so it's 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 a journey so um, I hope this was helpful for you. You know, come back again. Let me know in the comments what you want to see, any specific poses. I may not be able to do all of them just yet, but either way, um, maybe I'll put them on the list of um, my own journey and then share share as we go. And we can always pull in other experts um, who who've been there, done that, and um, you know, keep keep things moving. All right. So um, on that note, um, I hope to hear from you. Um, as to what you'd like to see in terms of specific asanas um, and this is Shiva signing off from Minneapolis, Minnesota your friendly neighborhood wellness and self-discovery coach stay well stay strong and smiling